Hello and welcome to Property Profits Real Estate Business Building, where we help you grow a real estate business, not just a portfolio. My name is Gord Lemon and I've been involved in Canadian real estate and more recently in the U.S. for over 26 years. I'm also a coach and a published author. You know, any investor wanting to add their portfolio must consider a number of calculations, both in the initial property analysis as well as in the mortgage qualification process. One of these is called debt coverage ratio, or DCR, which is especially important to lenders. The debt coverage ratio determines whether the individual property or the overall portfolio generates enough income to cover annual debt. Lenders want the property or portfolio to generate enough income to cover all the expenses so the individual investor doesn't have to rely on their own money to cover any shortfall. A debt coverage ratio of 1% means that you have a balanced portfolio, which means the same amount of income and expenses is balancing off. Greater than 1% means you have money left over, and less than 1% means you don't have enough to pay the mortgage and money's coming out of your pocket, and that's what they don't like. Most lenders' guidelines require an investment property or overall portfolio to have a DCR of 1.1 or 1.2 or higher before they actually give you a mortgage. So what is used to calculate the debt coverage ratio? Here are the factors which have an impact on DCR calculation for the investment property portfolios. Monthly rent, vacancy rate, mortgage payments, and the annual expenses. How do we actually calculate the debt coverage ratio? Well, let's get into it. Debt coverage ratio equals annual net operating income over annual debt service. So let's break this down into an example. Let's say the purchase is a single family home investment property for 300,000 with a 20% down payment of $60,000 and therefore a mortgage amount or mortgage balance of $240,000. Let's say the mortgage payment is $1,171.81 and this is based on a five-year fixed rate of 3.29% at 25-year amortization. Let's say our monthly rent is $2,500 times 12, which is $30,000 per year. And we know some of our costs and others we're still gonna have to calculate. So right now, these are the numbers that we're gonna work with. Monthly rent we know is 2,500. We have to work out our vacancy rate and credit loss, our management fee, but we're going to use these as hard expenses. Property taxes of $3,000 per year, utilities of $4,200 per year, maintenance of $1,200 per year, and insurance of $1,200 per year. Now let's figure out the ones that we need to calculate. So for this example, I'm using a 3% vacancy rate, which we can subtract from our gross rental income as a necessary expense. This amount should be taken monthly and left in a separate account. I also add 2% credit loss which is a term associated more with financial institutions. This is a means for financial institutions to account for expected losses from bad debts. And sadly, if you're an owner of any tenanted properties, you will experience this. So it's prudent to make the choice to put aside cash monthly so this eventuality doesn't affect you. So in this case, we're gonna allot 5% total of the annual gross income or $30,000 times 5%, which is $1,500. Next. Property management is an optional factor for you as an owner of a tenanted property. You can choose to self-manage, hire a caretaker, or use a property manager. However, a lender will use this factor in their DCR calculations, regardless of your method or cost of property management. So we're gonna use an 8% factor here with your gross annual rent income times 8% gives you $2,400 for the year. So now we have all of our expenses here. Vacancy 15 plus management 2400 plus maintenance 1200 plus property taxes, utilities, and insurance. And our total expenses for the year are $13,500. So now we take our expenses and minus this from our annual gross rent. And we get $16,500 as our net operating income. So our gross rents minus our expenses equals $16,500. So here's the DCR calculation as a reminder. We know our NOI is in the numerator now. Now let's deal with the annual debt service for our denominator. So our monthly mortgage payment is $1,171. We multiply that to get an annual amount of $14,061. So now we plug in these numbers into our numerator and denominator. And the DCR on this property ends up being 1.17%, which will be fine for some lenders who use a 1.1 minimum and not as good with the lenders who use a 1.2 minimum. 
So what if we have other properties? Could that help? Well, let's see. Let's say you have three other properties and we use the 1.17 that we just figured out as our subject property and we add our existing properties which let's say have the following individual DCR ratios 1.48 plus 0.97 plus 1.38 and that gives us a total number of 5% which we divide by the number of properties being 4 which gives us an overall portfolio ratio of 1.25% which should pass mustard with all lenders so congratulations. That's all the time we have for now. Implement the DCR calculation with your portfolio or next property you're considering purchasing and see what the debt coverage ratio is. This can help your next purchasing decision. Lots more tips and strategies on this channel or at CanadianREJVClub.com or www.PropertyProfits.ca. Keep building your real estate business. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.